Hi everyone, it's Derek here from Adumet. So welcome to today's video, which we go through a COPD case study. Now I'm really aware that it's all about applying your knowledge in a practical way. So I really like doing these videos because it helps you just achieve this exact same thing. So before the end of each question that I read out, don't forget to pause, write your answer down and click continue when you're ready to move on. I've also attached a link to our COPD playlist, which contains all the theory and the background information you need to get through this case study. So with that said, let's dive straight in. James is a 60 year old chronic smoker with a long standing history of COPD. He also has a background of hypertension, eczema and hay fever. On routine review, he admits he has not been compliant with his medication and his symptoms tend to be worse in the early mornings and sometimes in the evenings. He was prescribed a prevent inhaler in addition to his short acting beta agonist, but doesn't remember the name of this. It's been shown that he has worsened control of his COPD with an FEV1 of 35% and an FEV over FVC of less than 0.7. So our first question, with the available information, how would you categorize the COPD severity? Mild, moderate, severe, or very severe? Well, as you can see in the attached table, an FEV1 of between 30 and 49 falls within the severe category. Therefore, this patient's COPD will be classed as severe. Question two. The patient knows that he's on a short acting beta agonist. Now, due to poor compliance, he has forgotten the name of the preventing inhaler he was prescribed to use in addition to the short acting beta agonist. So the question here is, what is a likely inhaler he would have been put on to use in addition to a short acting beta agonist? So current guidance suggests that if the patient still has ongoing shortness of breath and exacerbations, we can think about escalating treatment. Now the next step following the use of a short acting beta agonist really depends on if the patient has features of steroid responsiveness. Now in this particular case, the patient has these features. Examples of such features of steroid responsiveness which this patient has is a history of ATP as well as a variation of the symptoms throughout the day. This patient will therefore be on a combination inhaler containing a long acting beta agonist in addition to an inhaled corticosteroid. Let's move on to question three. So following your review of the patient, he's now been established um, for the last six months on a short acting beta agonist, a long acting beta agonist and inhaled corticosteroids. By despite this, he presents to you with a acute exacerbation of his COPD. Prior to his exacerbation, his symptoms were really well controlled and do you have any problems? So, Besides treating this exacerbation, what would be your next step in relation to his COPD management? The answer here is to monitor the patient and ensure that he's compliant with the medication. Let's have a think about why this is the answer in this case. Gaddon suggests that we can add a long-acting muscarinic antagonist to our long-acting beta agonist and inhaled corticosteroid if the patient has two or more exacerbations or if they have worsening symptoms. Now, in this particular case, the patient has only had one exacerbation, and as you can note, in this case study, his symptoms were well controlled prior to his exacerbation. Other factors to consider for treatment escalation will be if the patient had a hostile admission or if they had symptoms that were affecting the ADLs. Both of these are not present in this case. Thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content like this. Make sure you check out our other case study videos if you found today's video helpful.